A lantern is brought into the office and I can see five people coming in. Three security officers all uniformed the same way. Hi guys! And then there's Kier and Halo both being dragged in. They're tossed in. Halo crumples to the floor. But Kier lands on his knees and looks ready to fight. Hey all you cool creatures. I'm Cryptid. Welcome to the Cryptid Plays YouTube channel. And today we are playing more Obscura. Uh, this time I will be doing Kier's route, which is going to be a lot of fun. But um, I will have to start a new game. You won't watch me play through it, but there are some added visuals and if I don't start a new game, it might actually kind of break uh, the game if I go from an old save. But like I said, you won't be seeing that. So anyhow, I will read off the content warnings for his route. And then we will start right where it begins. So let me pull up those warnings real quick. All right, starting off strong here. Kier blackmails the character, coercing them into criminal behavior and restricting their ability to leave. Optional use of a recreational substance in Kier's route, which may affect the result of the scene. Optional alcohol use in Kier's route, which only alters flavor text. Discussions of human trafficking. Player character death by, oh boy, disembowelment and a cutthroat. Non-player character death, descriptions of blood and gore, and death threats against the player character. So this is going to be a very intense route, I believe. But Kier is a thief, so I expect some of that. Anyhow, with all of that out of the way, let's see how this goes down. All right, here we are. I uh, didn't like, I went through the uh, stuff before we get to this point, but we hear, let me see. We hear the rabble of someone having been caught. So, if we stay and see what happens, we are going to meet Kier. So let us do that. Idle curiosity keeps me where I am, watching the ruckus of the crowd intensify. Very suddenly, one of the members of the crowd breaks away and sprints directly towards me. I start moving. Oh. oh, wow, this music is cool. I start moving backwards, trying to step aside. I misjudge my step and stumble. I fling a hand out in an attempt to find my balance. The sprinter slows down very slightly as they get closer to me, slow enough to catch my hand and jerk me forward. I try and pull my hand away, but it's impossible. The runner pulls me along and I have to use all my focus to keep up. Stop! Thief! Thief? I cannot help my astonished outburst. What? Like you're surprised? We pelt down the tunnel. Many of the people step aside for us, hardly surprised by a pair sprinting away from a collection of uniformed officials. I wouldn't want to be involved either. No, unfortunately we are. The runner takes a sharp turn, nearly wrenching my arm from its socket. I yelp as I follow along, 
Then we take a turn into some sort of business establishment. The runner does not slow down for a second as the shopkeeper opens their back door for us and closes it once we're through. The back alley we're in is uncomfortably cramped and we have to shuffle through. Hold on. All at once, the thief turns, grasps my shoulder, and pushes me backwards until I'm pinned against a wall. What the? Shh, shh, shh. We're both panting. The thief leans in until I'm nearly pressed body to body with them. By the way, fun fact for those of you who don't know anything about the characters... Because he was drawn so huge, they decide to make his character actually really big. So yeah, that's just a fun little fact. Stay quiet for 20 seconds. Helpless, I have to follow the thief's lead. I do everything in my power to breathe silently and try to tuck myself behind this stranger. After a count of 30, the thief gives me space. Who are you, exactly? Cryptid? Okay, cryptid. Do you trust me? I mean, the answer is no, but... <laughs> but I think for the first couple of endings, it won't matter regardless. I think actually saying yes... Uh, keeps his affection points lower here. So, yes. The word is out before I can think about it. Yes. <laughs> oh, he seems surprised. The thief's mask turns towards me in a single abrupt motion. <laughs> This is going to be the one time in this video that I probably allow myself to use the F word because this is hilarious. The fuck? What other choice do I have? Not trusting a stranger. He, I'm fairly confident that's a masculine voice, sounds utterly gobsmacked. Not in a good way. I wouldn't be either. And what happens if I run off? You get arrested. Then trusting you is the right thing to do. Judging by those content warnings? Not really. By the lunar god's scars. It's not. Okay, but this is amazing. I I like him already. He's definitely exasperated with me now. But I'm not about to stop needling this idiot. Are you suggesting I should go get myself arrested? For what sounds to be your crime? No. You should definitely listen to what I'm saying. But you shouldn't just freaking trust me. Very well. You're a criminal and a scoundrel. I don't trust you. Lead the way to our escape now. I do love how snarky our character can be. It's really endearing. His sigh is long-suffering. As though he was the one just abducted and led on a chase. The gall. We're gonna get along spectacularly. Keep quiet until I tell you it's all right to speak again. Not yet. What's your name, thief? You got mine. I'm a thief. I'm supposed to take things. Do you want me to call you thief while we're walking around? 
Would you like that kind of attention? Ugh, you're not always going to be this mouthy, right? Depends on how much you deserve it. Call me Kier. Pleased to meet you, Kier. Really? Not yet. And now you're going to shut up. Fine. I didn't say you could talk yet. I've grown comfortable with the anonymity of my mask, but it's a great shame I can't show Kier what exactly I think of his sass. To be fair, he's probably thinking the same thing. We sneak through the back alleys, shuffling between buildings that seem to be leaning into each other. I have no idea where we are at this point. I have lost sight of all my usual landmarks, and there's every chance I'm in a cavern I've never explored before. Here, at least, looks to be completely comfortable navigating this space. We stop at a dead end. Or, at least, it looks to be a dead end for a moment. Kier shoves aside a collection of heavy planks, and a short, narrow passage is revealed. Watch your step. We have to crouch and nearly crawl through the passage but it is mercifully short. It leads into a small, open space behind several rough-built houses. At least I think they're houses. A lanky teen staring down at us from behind a scrappy, stiffened fabric mask. Hey! We're sunstone polishers. Don't mind us. Okay. What was that? A code phrase? Still no talking. I roll my eyes behind the privacy of my mask. Then I take real stock of my surroundings. I am in a strange place with a man I cannot trust, and I only know about one exit, the one behind me. I mean, obviously we know what saying get out of here does, it's going to take us back, but let's see how that goes. Get out of here. If I'm going to escape, I need to do it now. I glance at Kier. He's walking away, pushing past the teenager. Neither of them are looking at me. I step backwards carefully and quietly. They don't notice. Oh. Then I turn around and duck into the passage. It's undignified scuttling on my hands and knees, but I make quick pace. Hey, wait! Nope! The short tunnel is blocked off again, as expected, but a firm shove against it opens up a narrow gap I squeeze through. Then I am on my feet and I start to run. I can hear Kier behind me. I follow the sound of people out of the alleyways and onto the main road. My heart pounds as I try my best to melt into the crowd. I am just one of the faceless many exploring what appears to be a row of massage parlors and gambling houses. Slowly, I start going back the way I came, into more familiar territory, and eventually, the church comes into view. 
I slip through the imposing massive oak doors. And okay, so now we're going to go back. <laughs> that was fun, though. So what if I just say stop after trying to turn back? I catch myself at the last second, trying to escape with no plan and little idea of what these people are capable of. It's a terrible idea. I don't want to be here, but running without a plan is deeply unwise. I step forwards again, just as Kier and the teen look back at me. Kier shoves past the teen, and I follow closely behind him. Wherever we are, I feel safer with him than alone. We squeeze between two houses and end up on a busy, cramped road. The glowworm light that illuminates all the caverns is mostly blocked out by the homes on either side of us. Then we're in a small square of sorts. It's an open space with the most sturdy buildings of this area all around. And there are paths leading away in all directions. It's dark, but I can see glimpses of masks in the shutters that crack open to watch us. Here! Hey, I'm home. This is the first time I've heard any warmth in his voice. It's such an abrupt change, I almost cannot believe it's the same man behind the mask. A child jumps from the low second story window, landing on Kier's back. <laughs> Even though it's a low second story window, that's uh, some bravery right there. Hey, give a man a warning. You're gonna break my back. No way! You menace. He reaches around and pulls the kid off him, holding them up by one arm. The kid is kicking and wiggling and laughing. You better say sorry, or you'll be stuck there forever. <laughs> sorry! Here lets the kid down. Sorry, you're so old. <laughs> the kid and a few of their friends pelt away, and Kier protests loudly, but even I can hear him smiling. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this, this is that other thief we met when working with Oleander, right? Kier, who's this? Someone plucks at my long sleeve, tugging my arm. I twist away sharply. That's cryptid, or so he told me. Do I get to speak yet? <laughs> my god, this man is sassy. Nah, I liked the silence. Hmm, well, I think you've enjoyed enough of that. Could never get enough. Then why did you bring us? I am called cryptid, though you can decide whether you believe me. What's a stranger doing here? Needed a decoy. Turns out he's the right size. A decoy? Wow, you gotta be quick on your feet to keep up with Kier. Yeah, I was impressed. I thought I was gonna lose him for sure. No, stop. Explain. Not everyone can keep up with me. You know that's not what I meant. What do you mean a decoy? You know what a decoy is, right? I needed one. You fit the profile. He's evading. Why? You needed a decoy to deceive some kind of authority. 
you needed a decoy, and you're a thief. Yes, very smart. Was I a decoy for someone you were working with or someone you stole? Oh, damn. That's a quick one for sure. It sounds like I'm right. And what were you planning on doing with me when you were done? Hmm? I was going to let you leave. It's such a blatant lie, my jaw drops. Does he really think I'll believe that? No way. You can't let him leave now that he can find his way here. Oh, so am I a prisoner now? Here, what were you thinking? I was thinking you'd play the bad guy, Griff, and let me be the hero. Looks like you're not on today. What? I was thinking that someone who can run and dodge the authorities is an asset. He faces me as he says that. What? What? He did not just try to recruit me. Oh, but he did. Here, you're insane. You can say that all you like. I'm right. We need him to stay quiet. I wasn't planning on involving the authorities. And why should I trust you when you say that? You might be naive enough to trust a stranger, but I know better. You're the one who asked me. So we'll let him learn even more about us. That's about the shape of things. Once you're involved, you're the same type of criminal as the rest of us. And if I'm involved against my will? Hmm. Yeah, the enforcement here is just so kind and understanding. I'm sure they'll take you at your word. More people, plain masked and curious, are gathering around. I don't know why you're being so hostile to me when I didn't ask for any of this. Because you don't understand. If we get caught stealing, we get killed. The only way we can even start to trust you is if you've also got a noose around your neck. And I didn't ask for any of this. Doesn't matter. You! So as far as I can tell, being harsher on him slash not trusting him might be the choices that bring more affection points. So we're going to let it go. I'm about to loose a torrent of insults, but I check myself. I am in Kier's territory, not my own. If he decides I'm not worth the trouble of dealing with, he and his gang could easily end me. Huh. Nothing more to say. I turn my face away sharply. He might not be able to see my expression, but I'm certain my body language radiates anger. Well, finally figured out how to shut you up. I have to swallow down bitter bile and blue fire fury. There's a quiet moment. Everyone around us seems to be coming to the same conclusion as me. I am cornered. I don't have a choice in this. I keep my voice as flat and neutral as possible. Not really. No. 
Then what do I do? You run a few jobs with us. Get that noose good and tight. And then, if you want to leave, you get yourself a new identity and you leave. You already put on a mask and picked a name once, right, cryptid? Right. Then you can do it again. You sure about this, though? Yeah. Yeah. With Gups down for the count, we need a new lookout. Cryptid's got what it takes. I sure hope you don't think that counts as a compliment. When I compliment you, if that ever happens, you'll know. Good to know. And we're not using Eve because... Because Eve is 12. Don't be stupid, Griff. Fine. I'll do what you need, and then I'm out. Hey, no need to make it sound like a prison sentence. But it basically is. Am I not being held here against my will? Prisoners don't get paid. You will. What? We're pragmatic. We're not monsters. You do the work, you get paid. Can we really afford? Yes, Griff. I heard we're getting our favorite visitor in a few weeks. We'll all be getting paid. Hell yes! What, what do you mean, paid? Caught your attention, have I? I think it's fair to know what my wages are going to be. The number Kier gives is not gobsmackingly high, but it's not low either. A few jobs could make for some comfortable living at the Leaping Bear for a long time. Then again, it won't solve my big problem. Good enough. I have a counter offer. The idea in my head is half formed, but I have to pursue it. Oh ho, are we negotiating? You're a thief. Yes, that's well established. Which means that if I want some thing instead of money, you could get it. Depends on the thing. Lunar Icor. The crowd around us bursts into a flurry of whispers. Well, at least they know it's important. Kier's voice changes suddenly, the timber low in a way I can't interpret. You need i -Core. I do. Or what? Why should I trust you enough to say? Rude. No, not really. Blackmailer. There's a long pause. That's a lot of jobs you're going to have to work to earn something that pricey. Would I be able to make enough money to buy it? Not in your life, I don't think. Not with us, at least. Then working for you is my best shot at getting it. Griff suddenly pulls on Kier's cloak, and he leans in. There's whispering, and I'm not nearly close enough to hear it. Then they separate, and Kier runs a hand over his mask. It's a gesture of pure exhaustion. 
fine. The whispers rise in intensity. You work with us. You get your i -Core. He holds out a gloved hand. We have a deal. I slowly reach out. He clasps my hand and we shake on it. Deal. I'm tempted for a second to think that this was too easy, but it really wasn't. Here calls out into the crowd. Someone go out with him to get his things. Pardon? We can't have you sneaking in and out all the time. Too dangerous. We just finished moving here as well. So I live here now? You'll get a room of your own. Eventually a volunteer comes forward. Together we sneak out of the hidden community and return to the Leaping Bear. They refuse to talk to me and just follow me like a shadow into my room while I gather the few things I left there. Some clothes. The odd knickknacks I've managed to acquire. My hygiene supplies. Then it's time to return the key. Hello. Oh, cryptid. Good to see you. Ready to pay for more time. You're definitely the reliable sort, so I can offer a good rate. Um, not this time, sorry. I found uh, somewhere else. A little closer to my goals. I dropped the key on the counter in front of her. Thank you, though. The Leaping Bear was becoming a bit of a new home for me. This makes me sad. I liked the Leaping Bear. Bruna is quiet for a few seconds. Then she drops her voice low. So low I can barely hear her. Do you need help? If that shadow of yours is unwelcome, Rufus can remove them. What? Oh. Oh, no, no. Things are fine. Rufus doesn't need to do anything. I'm fine. My new arrangements came as a surprise, but I did say yes to the offer. Never mind what kind of duress they put me under. I did agree. Good, then. Never liked seeing my clientele go places they weren't interested in going. But thank you for staying with us. Runa's voice is a little more formal than I'm used to. I suppose now that I'm leaving, I will likely never see her again. It's a little disappointing. I have no real bonds here in the marketplace, but I was getting used to the Leaping Bear. Goodbye. I leave, my shadow close behind me. Eventually, they take the lead guiding me to yet another hidden passage. How many ways of sneaking in and out are there? As we enter the cavern again, someone is there waiting for us. Hey! My shadow answers quickly. Don't mind us. Just here to polish some sunstones. Then I'm being led back into the tight network of pathways between closely built homes until we're stopped in the square again. Here, I'm done being a babysitter. I see Kier, or at least his mask, turn to face us. Already? You don't have to sound so annoyed. I didn't have many earthly possessions to start with. Getting them was easy. Good. We found a room for you two. You'll be staying with me. I'm sorry? What? No, 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 no. Vesper, this is a great opportunity. Look how attractive he is. Here brings home a stray. He gets to take care of it. 
a stray griff cryptid is a person use his name the way he says it it sounds like this is a frequent topic of discussion my home is small but i get a lot of guests so i keep a spare room then i suppose Suppose I should thank you for your hospitality? It would be nice. Maybe later. Kier suddenly stands next to me and pats my back right between my shoulders. Let's get going. I've had a long ass day and I need a break. Are you even going to be able to relax with a stranger in your home? No, but it's nice to pretend. We start walking. By the way, welcome to Mouse Hole. What a name for this place. The twisting paths between the buildings are a tangled mess, and there's no easy landmark to orient myself with. Further from the square, the homes and businesses, such as they are, are packed so tightly together that the blue-green glowworm light from above doesn't reach us. Instead, the warm, flickering light of lamps and lanterns fills the pathway. It's dim, but at this point that is hardly a problem. My eyes are certainly used to the constant glow of the marketplace. Here we are. It's one home sandwiched tightly between two others, near indistinguishable from the rest. The only identifiable thing I notice are the closed shutters, painted blue instead of simply sealed raw wood. Here unlocks the door and holds it open for me. Come inside. I step in. It's small and cramped, as anyone would have guessed. But when Kier lights the lantern by the front door, I can see that it is a comfortably arranged space. None of the furniture matches, but all of it works in some kind of cluttered harmony. Since it's easiest to go down and not get his relationship points first, we're gonna stay quiet. Here is quick to point things out in a short tour of his home. There's a water closet behind the door. If you use the water up, you'll have to get more. I can show you where after I get some sleep. Your room is there. The key is in the lock. That's the only key. Don't lose it. Understood. If you buy and keep your own food, that's fine. Otherwise, you contribute to my budget and share what I get. Any other rules I ought to know? Don't be destructive. Don't make a racket while I'm sleeping. And if I leave? Go around the neighborhood as much as you like. Go around the neighborhood as much as you like. If you try to leave without an escort, expect the watch to notice and stop you. I'm going to have something to eat before bed. You hungry? I'm glad he can't see the surprise on my face. Are you sure about letting you have a snack? About keeping me here? Oh, here's the thing, Cryptid. I'm not that worried about you murdering me in my sleep. My door locks the same as yours. And honestly, eternal rest isn't exactly something I'm dreading. You know, that's fair. He chuckles a little. If you decide to make yourself into a problem, we can find somewhere else to put you. 
Griff knows a pretty obscure tunnel that goes straight down if you're really unbearable. If it's all the same, I'd like to avoid that. It's easy enough to think of this as just another guest house. That cure is no worse than Rufus. Intimidating, but ultimately harmless. He steps toward what I assume to be a cooking space. The counter is exceptionally cluttered, but he is able to find his goal with ease. A shallow wood bowl. Here. He takes a handful of whatever it is from the bowl and, and then holds it out to me. This is... Deadly poison. Eat up. A closer look tells me that it's actually an assortment of dried fruits. Though I doubt this one has any bearing on his uh, affection points, but decline for now. No, thank you. It's not actually poison. I had guessed. I just don't want to eat right now. Your loss. He puts the bowl away. He doesn't reveal his mouth as he nibbles, instead threading the fruit under his mask. <laughs> well, get yourself some rest. Don't murder me in my sleep. I'll resist the temptation as best I can. Cure departs suddenly, taking himself and his handful of dried fruit into his bedroom. I hear the lock click decisively, and I am suddenly alone again. Free to indulge my curiosity privately? I do a quick tour of this front room. Cure certainly made an effort to make this a livable space, but that seems to be as far as his efforts have gone. Not much for entertainment here, is there? Maybe he doesn't have friends over much. My search is quick in the end. It has to be with so little to look at. I slip into the dark guest bedroom as though I am an intruder. For a moment, I feel like I am. It has the same cozy but sparse feel of the main room. Not a space I could call my own. Door locked, I give myself permission to relax. Here could very well have a second key to this room, or choose to break or bypass the lock in some way. But there is little use worrying about it. I am already so keyed up from stress that adding the possibility of being murdered in my sleep would make resting impossible. What have I gotten myself into? I've been recruited into a gang of thieves against my will. A gang that likely steals to survive, but there's one thing that leaves me deeply uncomfortable. If I was a decoy for something Kier stole, that means Kier was stealing a person. Could I live with myself helping to steal people? So because of how the first few routes go, there is no good reason we don't trust Kier. The cold fingers of reality close around my heart. There is no reason I can imagine that justifies stealing people. Stealing for survival I can understand, but not that far. I swallow hard, trying to chase these thoughts away. I'm not going to sleep at all, am I? I follow the motions of getting ready for bed. I even take off my mask, though I am careful to lie down with my back to the door. And after hours of trying to find a comfortable position, I must have fallen asleep, because Kier wakes me up with sharp knocks to the door. 
In the days that follow, I get used to the pace of life in Mouse Hole. I am, as promised, left to my own devices for the most part. I can sense people getting tense when I drift towards any of the myriad exits, but I'm not about to test my luck with an ill-considered escape attempt. Here, it seems, is a popular one. He's constantly being called this way or that, attending to roof repairs or settling quarrels, but that is only when I see him, which is quite rare. We are, quite often, ships that pass in the night. In my first days, I was largely ignored. None of the regular residents wanted to interact with me. I have to admit, it nearly drove me mad. But once I proved to their satisfaction that I'm not a deranged maniac, the people seemed keen to get an additional set of hands in their work. I've chopped vegetables and hauled water and watched babies and held a lot of ladders in place. It's not hard work, but it conquers my boredom and gives me a chance to make small talk. Cryptid, I need a hand. On it. Shale, one of the friendliest people in Mouse Hole, is stacking crates near an exit passage. Not sure how much I can help. I don't think my reach is longer than yours. I just need a little more support so I can hop. They do a short hop and shove the crate into place. If you've got time, I, I could use a hand a little longer. My schedule is packed, but I can skip a social engagement or two to help. Shale's chuckle is gratifying. Very funny. But aren't you going to the strategy meeting soon? Strategy meeting? You're running a lookout, aren't you? I believe that was the arrangement, but this is the first time I'm hearing about it. Hey, cryptid, we gotta talk, strats. Speak of the devil. Looks like I'm doing this on my own. I wouldn't I wouldn't want you to skip that social arrangement. Thank you, Shale. Maybe there will be some barrels we can roll around later to make up for this. I think there's an empty one around here somewhere. The kids took it to roll each other in. That I would love to see. Are you ignoring me, cryptid? Not in the slightest. You know how much I love talking with you. Bye, Shale. Bye. I make my way towards Kier. I'm a little more comfortable following him through the narrow winding paths of Mouse Hole now. What were you doing there? Trying to give Shale a hand? Makes sense. Shale's always finding good tasks to get the kids involved in community work. You're probably right, but I resent that remark. Anyway, get moving. Everyone's waiting on you. You say that like I deliberately dallied. This is the first I'm hearing about a meeting. Then we'll need to fix your communication, too. Hey, waiting for me to ask when are you holding a secret meeting I do not even know is a possibility is not reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Get moving. We duck into one of the buildings on the square. Here has to duck particularly low. The door frame is unusually short, and he is a fairly tall man. Hey, Kier. Finally found him? I wasn't hiding. Found him just fine. Thanks. I wasn't hiding. 
I take a seat at a table with several other individuals. The room is extremely dark, even for an underground room. But I think I can see hints of this being a pub or bar of some kind. Real quick, cryptid. These are Lave and Halo. You already know Griff. Terrible seeing... <laughs> Terrible seeing you again, cryptid. Likewise. One of the other two gives me a slow, casual wave. Lavernia. Call me Lave. My girl here is Halo. The other one, Halo, gives me a near imperceptible nod. She's leaned in close to Lave. Or maybe Love, if it's Lavernia. Ah, whatever. Not the talkative sort of couple then. Okay, Griff, what's the brief? We've got a commission. Screw off. Kier's already approved it. Don't worry. It's fine, love. Griff gave me the full rundown of the client. So I wonder if this commissioner is perhaps Oleander. Anyhow, we've got a commission to relieve the auctioneer of a few choice pieces. Absolutely not the auction. I'm not crazy. The auctioneer. That means crossing the ruby walls. The what? You've done that half a dozen times. And nearly died each time. We're not dead yet. Not you too, Kier. You're supposed to be sensible. I am being sensible. This is a huge potential payoff and we have an in. Okay, so I think Kier prefers us to kind of think for ourselves. So instead, we are just going to keep listening with, without giving any input. I don't fully understand, but I'm not about to interrupt this discussion without a good reason. Fine. We'll do the extremely dangerous job behind the ruby balls. That's the spirit. So we all cross the walls. Easy. And we all know where the auctioneer's house is. Our inn is in the new building being done at the club next door. It's an easy climb. From there to the balcony, which doesn't have a lock. You and Halo are going to find and lift the pieces we're after. You and me are going to be defense and distraction. And Cryptid will try to live up to Gups's example. Not a terrible plan. Not a good plan either. Halo's voice is so ghostly, I'm not entirely sure I heard it. Obviously, it sounds dumb without the important details. Griff draws a map on the tabletop with a stick of chalk and carefully walks us through each step. For the most part, I understand. My role is, if nothing else, comically easy. Stand by, signal if there are other people around. Okay, you with us, cryptid. I don't have much of a choice in that, do I? He's asking if you understand. Almost everything. Almost. I've gleaned that the auctioneer's home is on the level above a pleasure parlor. Something you did not explain. But I don't know what the ruby walls are. How do you not know that? I've been under the mountain less than a month, and you're locals, that's how. Fine. The ruby walls are a series of walls that have a vein of raw rubies in them, in the main market cavern. There's gates that theoretically anyone can go through, but in practice it's a space for the rich and beautiful. Exactly. 
And it's heavily guarded beyond the walls, hence the danger. Yup. Now I understand. And in the future, you'll speak up immediately if there's something you don't know. You're always telling me not to talk. And now this. I'm serious. I'm not risking my own neck to save you if you're in a stupid situation. You get in trouble. You're on your own. So I'm an acceptable loss. Exactly. Let's get ready to go. The four of them stand up. I follow their lead. My cloak is just barely fine enough to be worn beyond the ruby walls. But the other four take the chance to fancy themselves up. God, back in these awful things. Here holds up a heavy, richly embroidered cloak. Imagining him in it is comical. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing at me, cryptid. Yes. <laughs> and you, love? She shrugs. He's right. You look stupid in that. It doesn't match. It really doesn't. I keep telling you, buddy. You're made of iron, not silver. Griff's already in his disguise. Like you're one to talk. You look like a child going through daddy's closet. Griff's short stature and casual posture, leaning into Kier, is completely at odds with his jeweled hood and satin cape. Knowing what he's like honestly makes it even funnier. You look like you robbed Satine without a lantern. Oh, we can be mean. I think teasing is the good way to go, so I'm just gonna leave him be. I bite my tongue. Griff is taking everything about as well as could be expected, but I doubt he'd enjoy my taking a jab at him. Because I assume that that's going to mean we're not trying to be part of the group. You know, we're just not attempting to uh, be friends. Things settle down again. I don't know why I put up with you. Here pats his shoulder firmly. Neither do I. There's some more scattered laughs, but the atmosphere of the room slowly turns more serious. Halo and Lav are checking each other's disguises, ensuring their weapons are not visible to passers-by. Kier is checking over his own knife carefully. It's beautiful and likely quite old, unlike the rest of his daily wear. Should I be armed? It's not a good idea, obviously. I am a rank novice and would be far more likely to be stabbed with my own knife than to use it properly to defend myself. Still, I cannot help feel a twinge of fear. A knife won't make me feel less frightened. But it's hard to convince myself of that fact. The rest of the preparations happen in anticipatory silence. Ready? Then let's move. We walk in a loose group to yet another exit. I have yet to fully count the ways into and out of Mouse Hole, but there must be at least half a dozen. It's another narrow passage that leads into the back room of a shop. From there, we can exit through the storefront and step into the busy walkways of the marketplace. look alive. In any other circumstance, we would be a deeply strange group, a gang of well-dressed strangers walking together but not talking. But this is hardly the strangest sight in the marketplace. There's bird-masked contortionists performing in a tiny cage, 
and a pair of drunkards fighting in just one of the crossroads we walk through. Things are as lively as ever. We passed the church on our way to the most central caverns. Was it only a few days ago I was standing there, looking for some clues to start me on my hunt? As we entered the largest cavern, the heart of the marketplace where I started my journey, we walk close together. All right, you know the drill. Split up. We meet across from the pearl choker. Cryptid, you're with me. Love and Halo are gone in a second, melted into the crowd. Griff glances back at Kier for a second before doing the same. Don't trust me not to run off? Not in the slightest. Plus, you're new to this. I might be able to give you some pointers. How do you know I'm new at this? You're paying a lot of attention to small details. The kind that are easy to ignore when you're used to this work. Fair enough. I've never planned a theft before. I don't think that these matter. Believe it or not, my surface life had very little thievery in it. You know, I think I can believe it. But like I said before, you're quick. And as long as you're not about to get high and mighty about stealing, you'll do fine. Depends. What is the auctioneer like? She's someone who would literally sell anything if it means getting a cut. And what will we do with our finds? Sell it to a different asshole who would do anything for a cut. I think you'll like him, though. He's got a tongue as quick as yours. That's my oleander. Is that all you think I am? Maybe if you talked less, I'd understand you more. Not a chance. Worth a try. And here are the walls. Take them in. My first impression is that they're nothing special. Stone walls about twice as tall as the average person. Smooth enough to be nearly impossible to climb barehanded. And then I noticed the flickering lights. The rubies in the stone have been dug around and polished where they sit. So they catch the light. They glimmer like candles, but the color is richer and redder than any fire. There are hundreds, possibly thousands of them. It's subtle and beautiful. All right, I actually am gonna go see what the other choice says, and then we'll continue. I've never worked in an organized group to steal before. I've never worked with others in a project like this. But you have done this kind of work before. I thought we were supposed to leave our surface life behind down here. Leave it behind all you like. You're still quite comfortable working with us. Well, you have to survive somehow, right? And I doubt the auctioneer is someone who will suffer greatly when we're done with her. No, you won't have to feel bad for her when we're done. She's someone who would sell literally anything if it means getting a cut. Okay. And here's our gate. Brace yourself. Here seems to set his shoulders and marches forward, leaving me to hurry and catch up with him. Beyond the ruby walls, things are still busy and it's not as though there's anything to muffle the sounds of the rest of the marketplace. But there is still a noticeable change. The rest of the marketplace has people hawking their wares, shouting at potential buyers and cajoling them to buy. Here, the people standing in front of the businesses don't shout. They offer samples or display their wares, pose at, and flirt with passers-by. But there is no shouting. I suppose if you have a business here, you don't need to shout to get attention. It really is different. 
There is nothing in the world like the jewel box. It might have been said in admiration, except Kier's voice is oozing bitter disdain. Kier and I walk side by side, taking a few turns to avoid a direct path to the pearl choker. He stops to look at perfume bottles and little ivory statuettes. I pause near a window, blazing with light. A lantern shop. You know the plan. I know the plan. You know where to hide. I know where to hide if you foul up everything. But you won't, will you? From your lips to the moon. Don't make me run again. Or what? Or I'll be very cross. Be still, my beating heart. Anything but that. All right, let's focus. It would be kinder to wish him well, but we're not going to do that. I let myself fall silent. Here glances over at me. Maybe he was worried I had vanished when he couldn't hear me. I smile a little at my own private joke, then bring my thoughts back to the task at hand. We're getting close to the pearl choker now. Time to get to work. At the pearl choker, Kier splits away from me to enter through the front door. I slip between the pleasure parlor and the neighboring gambling hall. Both businesses are high class, with beautiful fronts and charming staff, and I swear I can hear a live band from one of them. But it doesn't matter how pretty the buildings are, all alleyways are the same. There's a vague sense of grime and hostility. I'm definitely not breaking any rules, but I'm also certainly not welcome here. If things have gone to plan, Love and Halo broke into the apartment above the Pearl Choker by climbing the new attachment to the gambling house and jumping the gap. Griff and Kier are going up through the inside using a staff passage. And I am keeping watch, signaling whether the alleyway is clear or not through a simple set of gestures. Holding one arm, there are people in the alley. Holding both, there are guards or staff in the alley. Arms relaxed, no one but me here. It is not complicated, but I do have to keep an eye on both ends of the alley and signal constantly. Ideally, all four of them will jump the gap and climb down the gambling hall's addition, and will separate to reunite in Mouse Hole. If we need to run, I even have the turns I'll need to take in the crossroads memorized. Straight through the first crossroad, left, then left again, right, and if I won't be seen, I go and hide in the butcher's shop. While I probably could remember it, I think it'll be better to just write it on my arm so I have hints activated. At least I have a plan. Oh, okay, so I think this is where we can get our first ending. Or, it's not escaped me that I am alone. I could just leave. No one can stop me. All right, let us leave. It's a bad idea. I take a single step away from the building, then another. Here doesn't come out and stop me. They sell people I can't be involved. I walk away, melt into the crowd, and I'm a little afraid that this means our friend, well, friends, our group will get executed, but hey, this, the, uh, we're ready for that, right? All my things are in Mouse Hole. I doubt they'll let me in without an escort. I am definitely putting myself in a terrible position. But for once, I am putting myself in this position. 
I am in control. However little it matters. Maybe I'll starve to death. Or sell myself. The control will have to be enough. Bad end. Take control no matter the cost. Oh boy. Well, that could have been worse, but we're probably in a really bad situation. Alright, let's go get the other endings. Let's get to work. I lean against the gambling hall wall. This one is made of stone, beautifully cut and polished, and scratched with all sorts of graffiti. People never change. Always marking that someone had been here, that Agatha had a great set of assets, that Darwin got intimate with his mate. Delightful. I am alone in the alley. I drop my arms and wait. Okay, so this this probably won't matter either. It's just flavor text. Uh, let's get all of them. My stomach churns with discomfort. I don't want to be here doing this. It's dangerous. I was forced to be here, coerced and blackmailed even. If it weren't for their threats, for the possibility of getting Lunar Eye Core, I wouldn't stay. I can find the fun in chatting shit with Kira during normal moments, but when I'm alone like this, it all comes back. I don't want this life. All I can do now is keep my head above water, but for the moment I have to put those feelings away. For a short while longer, I am completely alone. Okay, then let us get the other choices. Hello, stranger. Alright. I feel a cool neutrality. I don't enjoy this life, but I'm not upset to be here. Would I choose to be here of my own accord? Probably not. But to get Lunar Eye Core, I'd do anything. At least this is something I can tolerate. But for the moment, I have to put those feelings away. And I shall get the last one. We are excited now. My body buzzes with excitement. Despite the circumstances that brought me here, I feel a thrill like nothing else. The danger I'm in feels distant and unreal compared to the excitement of everything. But for the moment, I have to put those feelings away. For a short while longer, I am completely alone. Then a stranger wobbles along in, into the alley towards me. Hey. Hey. Mind if I smoke? Not at all. Want any? She holds out a little pouch of herbs. I recognize it on sight. Sweet grass. I've had it plenty of times before, back on the surface. You smoke it with others to build bonds. As loose herbs like this, it softens the hard edges of stress. Not enough to addle the mind in any way, just enough to make connection easier. I don't think this will matter until we actually try to do a good job, but... Let's just hold neither because I am also going for another bad ending, so it doesn't matter. I let my arms hang loose. Sweet grass, right? You know it. Every teen learns to grow it where I'm from. Lucky you. I only found the stuff down here. See, I don't think this matters much, but... Um... I'm going to accept and then go back and decline. It's not laced, is it? Couldn't afford it if it was. I'll have a little then. Thanks. The stranger gives me a slip of paper and a pinch of sweet grass. And we roll our tabs. I know the camaraderie of sharing something as simple as a little pinch of pleasure for no other reason than the joy of sharing. I don't trust this stranger, but I do trust the tradition we're engaging in. I remove the lower portion of my mask, letting it sit in a pocket. 
With a quick strike of a match, our tabs are lit and we are set to smoking. I lean back and smoke, feeling the sharp, jagged edges of my thoughts soften. I keep turning my gaze to either end of the alley, still focused on my mission. What are you here for? Alright, let me go back and just decline real quick. It's a kind offer, but I'll have to say no. Fair enough. More for me. She rolls her tab with quick, clever fingers. Even if she's new to the practice, she's clearly gotten good at it. She strikes a match. I can smell the faint sweetness of the smoke. I keep turning my gaze to either end of the alley, still focused on my mission. What are you here for? All right. Um, we'll avoid answering her for now. Just personal business. And you? Heard there was a fortune won in the gambling halls here every hour. Thought I'd try my luck. And how has your luck fared? I'm about to get a big win. I can feel it. Not well, then. May the lunar god smile on you. Oh, you're a loony. <laughs> Used in a different context, that is not a nice term at all, but I assume that is just what they call the people who uh, worship the lunar god here. There's a few people milling near the alleyway entrance. I can't tell what sort of people they are. No, I'm not. No. If I'm a little abrupt, I don't mean to be. I just have to keep my attention on the others nearby. Still, she seems to take it as a dismissal and quiets down. Uh-oh. One of the people at the end of the alleyway starts coming in. Big, confident posture. At first, I can't tell if they're armed. Then I see the blade. Let's keep our arms down. We're just going to keep screwing up anyways. They get closer. Hello. Any reason you're loitering back here? Oh, I didn't realize we were loitering. My sweet grass companion stands up straight, hiding her tab by tucking her arm around her back. Sorry, I'll get out of your way. This one's not with you. No. She slips between the big stranger and the wall back to the gambling hall. Without so much as a goodbye, I have some questions for you. Definitely some kind of security. This is a problem. I'll just keep my arms down. Is there a problem then? Suspicious activity. Not good. Do people not stand around in alleyways in the jewel box? Not unless they're looking for trouble. I'm just looking for some quiet. I was just looking for a little bit of quiet. With another person? Better one than hundreds, I would say. The stranger's posture somehow gets more tense. Like they're waiting for me to book it. Why are you here? In the jewel box or in general? The marketplace. Buying. And you had time to wander around? Turns out not everything is for sale all of the time. I'm waiting for a shipment to come in. That should be enough truth to convince them. And what have you been doing while you wait? Minding my own business. I've been keeping to myself. Minding my own business, you know how it is. I don't. Isolation is a sign of suspicious behavior. Come with me. What? Where? Come. I could try to run, but that would absolutely confirm what they suspect of me. Well, all right, I suppose. I'm led into the pleasure parlor, but instead of following the smell of food and the sounds of laughter, we turn abruptly to the right. Offices, most likely. Wait here. 
I try for the door handle as soon as it's closed, but it's locked, and I have no means to unlock it. I'm left in a pitch black office, sitting on the floor for fear of bumping into something and damaging it. Property destruction is unlikely to endear me to those people. Alone for a while, my only option is to stew in my own feelings. The thrill I'd been feeling earlier has completely curdled, sitting sickeningly in my stomach. I'm almost nauseated with fear. A door slamming open scares the daylights out of me and I nearly jump to my feet. Stop freaking struggling. I'm not going to do anything. A lantern is brought into the office and I can see five people coming in. Three security officers all uniformed the same way. Hi guys! And then there's Kier and Halo both being dragged in. They're tossed in. Halo crumples to the floor. But Kier lands on his knees and looks ready to fight. I don't think this matters. I think we're caught regardless, but I will see what both say. Uh, stay down. I stay on the floor and watch as Kier is gut punched and forced down. Never an end to these rats, is there? Well, Thief, is that one part of your little team? The question is directed to Kier. The security officer is pointing at me. That's the lookout. Yeah. Screw you! I go down, you go down. That was the deal. He sounds cold. I don't like him that much and he clearly hates me, but I might have hoped he was better than this. Thieves don't get trials, not in the marketplace. If you're caught stealing, the victim gets to extract their punishment immediately. And so it is with us. I watch Kier fall. Halo turns away. I watch him slowly drown in a pool of his own blood, clutching tightly to the slash across his throat as though he has a prayer of survival. Hold on, I want to see what dialogue we get standing up, but it's going to end the same. All right, get up. I get to my knee, about to jump to my feet beside him. One of the security guards punches Kier in the gut before he can get up. Another throws me to the ground. Never an end to these rats, is there? All right. Now, that dialogue, I think, changes depending on how much he likes you, but it does just end the same. So, if this is where you end up, this is where you end up. All right, so he's clutching his throat as if it might help him survive. He doesn't get the painless end he would have wanted. The security officers watch him die in silence. For them, I suppose this is ordinary. Just another thief facing their expected end. I should be scared in this moment. I don't want to die. And especially in not such a grim way. But there's only an ice-cold void left in me. The part of me that feels is already dead. Once it's clear that Kier is dead, the security officers turn to Halo. Make it quick, please. She turns her head away, offering them her jugular. She's got something in her trembling hands. Maybe some memento from love. There's no time to ask before she's bleeding out on the stone floor. Then it's my turn. That end, if he's going down, so will you. Now we'll get the other endings. I think we have one more bad end than like, than a, like a neutral-ish end and then the good end. So see you then. All right. This time I won't be letting our uh, group die in the same way. I don't know if they will die in the next bad ending, but you know. All right. Uh, we are going to decline this. Also, I have to now hold out. I have to now hold one arm. I let my arm rest against my torso and grip and grip my elbow firmly. All right, we're gonna skip ahead. We are going to decline and not have any. 
It's a kind offer, but I have to say no. Fair enough. More for me. She rolls her tab with quick, clever fingers. Even if she's new to the practice, she's clearly gotten good at it. All right. I keep turning my gaze to either end of the alley, still focused on my mission. What are you here for? Uh, we can answer. Buying. What you buying? What you selling? Nothing as of yet. And do you? Heard there was a fortune one in the gambling halls here every hour. Thought I'd try my luck. And how has your luck fared? I'm about to get a big win. I can feel it. All right. May the, may the lunar god smile on you. Oh, you're a loony. There's a few people milling near the alleyway entrance. I can't tell what sort of people they are. Uh, most people here are. Well, most people here are. A lunar blessing felt appropriate. It's so strange, though. The solar god makes everything perfect. The lunar god ruins everything, and the people here worship the moon. I was never one for theology myself. Whatever. One of the people at the end of the alleyway starts coming in. Big, confident posture. At first, I can't tell if they're armed. Then I see the blade. I'll continue to hold one arm. They get closer. Hello. Any reason you're loitering back here? Oh, I didn't realize we were loitering. We were just having a break. Yeah, we were sharing some sweet grass, Wantony. She rummages through her bag, but the stranger cuts her off. No. They point at me. I didn't see you in the hall earlier. I wasn't in the gambling hall. Then where have you been? Here? Roof? Well, I've been here with him for a while now. Mind if I ask a few questions? Go ahead. Definitely some kind of security force. Did you come here alone? Come where? This alley? To the jewel box. I came with a friend. Oh no, I came with a friend, but he wanted to do certain things, and I didn't feel like joining him. You know how it is. Their posture betrays nothing. Then I see my new friend here with sweet grass, and she offered to share some. That's what happened? Yeah. Put that out and go back in. I'm not done yet. I'm talking to this one alone. It doesn't sound like they're going to brook any argument. You have a win waiting for you, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good talking with you. Likewise. She leaves and I'm left alone with this member of the security force. I'm gonna remain holding one arm even though I believe... Well, we're going for another bad ending, so... Is there a problem, then? Routine check. Do people not stand around in alleyways in the jewel box? Not unless they're looking for trouble. I'm just looking for some quiet. I was just looking for a little bit of quiet. With another person? 
better one than hundreds, I would say. The stranger doesn't look amused. Why are you here? In the jewel box or in general? The marketplace. Buying. And you had time to wander around? Turns out not everything is for sale all of the time. I'm waiting for a shipment to come in. That should be enough truth to convince them. And what have you been doing while you wait? Minding my own business. I've been keeping to myself, minding my own business. You know how it is. I don't. Isolation is a sign of suspicious behavior. Then you have never met an introvert. Open up your cloak. What? I need to check you for dangerous objects. You know what? Sure, I'm not carrying any, I don't think. Good thing I didn't take a knife. I open my cloak and put up with the security officer examining with almost intimate closeness by lantern light. It's uncomfortable, but there's only so much I can do. I did consent to this, technically. As you can see, I'm just an ordinary traveler. I agree that you're not carrying any weapons. You're free to go. Sorry? You can leave now. My first instinct is to tell them that I want to stay here. But that's not going to go over well. I'm waiting for someone here. Then wait in the tea parlor across the road. Clear out. I'd rather not. They stare at me. I suppose they're trying to parse exactly what I'm thinking. You've been cooperative, so I'm going to extend the same courtesy to you. Once. Get out of here now before I have to take you in for suspicious behavior. I freeze. I can't leave, but staying is also no longer an option. I am almost grateful that this is the moment someone chooses to leap from the balcony above and land on the addition to the gambling house. That is not a civvy for a frick's sake. What? I assume we should run, but... Let's check out this option. I have a split second to act, so I take it. I grab the sick. I grab the security officer's shoulders, jerk them down, and knee them as hard as I can in the guts. They crumple. I run. The security officer doesn't chase me. But me sprinting away from the gambling hall at full tilt, it's inherently suspicious. Others start pursuing me. I reach my first crossroad within seconds. Oh, left. It only takes a split second for me to realize I've made a mistake. And yes, the ending has to do with making a mistake, so... Turning back is impossible, I'll just fall into the arms of the security officers. I take more blind turns, hoping to find something familiar. But the marketplace is a labyrinth. I find myself trapped in a dead end. Several security officers grapple me. Get off! No one is coming to save me. Help! Anyone! The security officers are efficient if nothing else. For a second, I don't feel anything at all. I hear something splatter on the stone below me. There's a feeling of ice in my belly, followed by red, hot, agony. Above all, for a second, I feel overwhelmingly nauseated. I'd vomit my guts out, 
if they hadn't already been spilled out on the ground. My hearing goes distant and fuzzy. I can recognize the sounds of screaming. Everything gets distant and hazy. I'm in pain and it blurs my vision and muffles my hearing and, and deadens all other sensations. And then they leave me alone to die. Bad end, you were caught in the chase. Okay, so I believe the next two endings have to do with Kier's uh, affection specifically. But I'm going to check out some of the answers I didn't get. Just for fun. I'm pretty sure the, the right ones are still the ones we've gone with before. But still. We've already um had sweet grass, so I don't need that one. But I will hold... The one arm uh hold one arm but we're gonna decline and then we're gonna let the guard come in and we will answer this we've already done that before though all right one of the people at the end of the alleyway starts coming in big confident posture at first, I can't tell if they're armed, and then I see the blade. I mean, we know he's a guard now, but I don't know if our character does. Let's hold both. They get closer. Hello? Any reason you're loitering back here? He's gonna talk to us alone. Alright, so I decide to go back and uh, take a smoke. Um... So, I flick away my tab and cover my mouth again. I'll need my edges sharp if this person means trouble. They get closer. Hello. Oh, okay, so this completely changes it. Um. I don't have to answer questions at all, probably. I didn't see you in the hall earlier. Weird, I'm with him and I was in the hall. Maybe you missed him and... It was really crowded in there. You're sure about that? Sure hope so. Very well. Wow, that was so quick. But I do want to see what happens with some of the other answers because I'm curious. But yeah, the stranger turns to leave satisfied by this defense. As soon as they're gone, I turn to my companion. You didn't have to do that. You're good people. How do you know that? I just do. She takes a long drag of her tab. You're not gonna, you know, take out a sword and kill everyone in the gambling hall, right? Well, I was considering a spot of murder, but I think I'll hold off for now. There, good people. She sticks around a while longer. Apropos of nothing, she turns to me and asks, Want some of mine? Uh, sure. Why not? I remove the lower half of my mask and take a long drag of her tab. The warmth and softness in my head is partly the drug, but mostly the sheer pleasure of sharing it with a stranger. Then I put the mask piece back in place. Thanks. No problem. Well, you're probably in the clear for a little bit. I'm going to go back in there and get my win. I'm going to wish her well, but I want to see what cautioning her does. Don't spend too much now. You sound like my mother. Bye. All right. Wish her well. Good luck. Don't need it. I'm going to do great. Bye. Goodbye. And then she's gone. The smell of sweet grass is going to cling to my cloak for a while. But that's the only evidence of my companion. I didn't even ask her name. Um, I guess we can drop. We're alone. I'm not alone for too long after she leaves, though. Coming down. I can hear love from the balcony above me, but only barely. She's trying to shout and whisper at the same time. Okay, so I am curious about answering the guard, so... 
Yeah, some questions. Uh, remain holding. Suspicious activity. Not good. I seem to have found some trouble. Well, it certainly looks like I found some trouble. My job isn't trouble. Could have fooled me. The stranger doesn't look amused. Why are you here? And what have you been doing while you wait? Seeing everything the marketplace has to offer. Oh, I've been everywhere. Even if I'm not buying, it's incredible to see everything there is to offer. The staff at the Leaping Bear have been very good at advising me where to go. No answer, but that's better than a bad one. Open up your cloak. What? All right. <laughs> what happens if we refuse? No, I'd rather not. It's not optional. Insist. I will not open my cloak for a stranger no matter how much they tell me to. Then you'll need to come with me. Where? For a different kind of check. Weighing, I weigh my options. Running would confirm I'm some kind of criminal in their eyes and they're not going to let me linger here. I'll follow then. All right, this should be getting arrested. So we're going to just leave now. I can hear love from the balcony above me, but only barely. She's trying to shout and whisper at the same time. Almost silently, all four thieves leap from the balcony two floors up and land on the gambling hall's addition. From there, they climb down. Well, you didn't betray us. How could I? You've got my stuff. Ah, smart enough to put those facts together. Very good. Glad to see you were able to shut up long enough to not get caught. No, he nearly got us caught. But he also got us out of it again. Why does it smell like sweet grass? Someone came down here to smoke for a while. The smell tends to stick and linger. They don't need to know I joined in. Okay. Well, let's get out of here. When we reunited is in the rundown pub in Mouse Hole. Well, that was painless. That went much better than it had any right to. Good job, cryptid. Here pats my shoulder once. Glad my first job worked out. Hopefully the next one will be easy too. Oh ho. Next. You're getting into this, aren't you? It's a little exciting. A little. You're buzzing. Drinks on us. Then one of the servers, a, a barmaid with pretty hands and a full flat moon mask, delivers drinks to our side. Thanks, babe. Don't make me regret this Griffy baby. Griff will be on his best behavior now. Right? Yes, he will. He almost sounds like a chastened child. Here lifts his drink. To a successful run. The others raise their tankards. Toast with booze, I guess. To hell with it. Might as well get drunk. I toast with the rest of the thieves. The glass clinks and we all drink. Well, show us the loot. I think we've earned a look at our prize. Right. Yeah. Halo and Love go through their pockets and drop some small things on the table. God scars, that's the stuff. Griff turns to the server. We got a couple of good necklaces. Nothing wild, but we're not going to turn our noses up on that, right? 
some compass stones, a few rare coins that I know will go to a good home, and the bit we got commissioned for, a genuine witch ring. A witch ring? You're serious. As the grave. Well, that sounds very impressive. Witch rings give power to the wearer. The longer you wear it, the more power you get. It's just about the only magical thing that won't ruin your life. Well, it won't ruin your life directly. But there's still a lot of fighting over them. Yup. And that means people are willing to pay a lot to get their hands on one. What a treasure. You're telling me, D. Halo puts away the spoils of our adventure. And when good old Hemlock or Absinthe or whatever he's calling himself these days shows up, payday. It's Oleander now, baby. You're gonna be rich, Cryptid. I can hear him smirking. The drinking goes on for hours. I hear a lot of songs and more than a few stories about the other gigs they've done. Halo eventually brings out a deck of cards. She also wipes the floor with us. For someone as shy as she is, Halo is a regular card shark. Then Love yawns, and she and Halo go home to rest. Griff follows the server, who I now know is called Delight, into the back. Ooh, Griff. Lucky you. Well, that's that, then. You're free to go, Cryptid. What? Aren't I supposed to... Yeah, Griff will be pissed about this tomorrow. But I think it's for the best. Get your things and get out of Mouse Hole. That noose is good and tight now anyways. Why? Why are you doing this? You've been pretty obviously miserable here and as much as I appreciate someone who does the work, you're a pretty bad bit. This is better for everyone. I know he's right. I don't especially like Kier, and he definitely does not care about me. Even if I enjoyed the thrill of adventure, it isn't worth working alongside people who won't care about me or my safety. And the Lunar I-Core? That would have taken a lot of jobs to earn. You weren't even close. Then I guess I'll have to get it some other way. Good luck. Within an hour, I have my things and I'm walking out alongside Kier. He hands me a pouch of money and then he leaves. Off to handle his own business. What now? It's for the best that I'm leaving. I try to tell myself. It's for the best that I'm on my own again. But thinking of Mouse Hole leaves me feeling a deep pang of regret. Maybe if things went differently. No. No time to think of regrets. I've got a life to rebuild again. Off into the marketplace once again. Bad end, you're free to go without the Lunar Eye Core. Okay, so we will go and get his affection points and then get the good end. All right, we're on our way to getting all of his affection points and it starts at the very beginning. Do we trust him? No, absolutely not. Not remotely, should I? No. You shouldn't. But if you don't want to get arrested, you should still come with me. On another merry chase through the marketplace. Somewhere we can cool off. 
they didn't see your mask. So once the trail gets cold in 20-ish hours, you can go. Have this escaping business down to an art, do you? Wouldn't be here if I didn't. Well then, thief, steal me away. Keep quiet until I tell you it's all right to speak again. Here, who's this? Someone plucks at my long sleeve, tugging my arm. I twist away sharply. That's cryptid, or so he told me. Do I get to speak yet? Nah. I liked the silence. Hmm, well, I think you've enjoyed enough of that. Could never get enough. I am called cryptid, though you can decide whether you believe me. What's a stranger doing here? Needed a decoy. Turned out he's the right size. A decoy? Wow. You gotta be quick on your feet to keep up with Kier. Yeah, I was impressed. I thought I was gonna lose him for sure. No, stop. Explain. Not everyone can keep up with me. You know that's not what I meant. What do you mean, a decoy? You know what a decoy is, right? I needed one. You fit the profile. He's evading. Why? You needed a decoy to deceive some kind of authority. You needed a decoy and you're a thief. Yes. Very smart. Was I a decoy for someone you were working with or someone you stole? Oh. Damn. That's a quick one for sure. It sounds like I'm right. And what were you planning on doing with me when you were done? Hmm? I was going to let you leave. It's such a blatant lie. My jaw drops. Does he really think I'll believe that? No way, you can't let him leave. All right, where am I? I wasn't planning on involving the authorities. And why should I trust when you say that? You've already proven you understand. Trust is a lot harder to earn here than topside. So we'll let him learn even more about us. That's about the shape of things. All right. And I didn't ask for any of this. Doesn't matter. You let him have it. He likes getting yelled at. You manipulative gutter slime. Hey, I was nothing to you and you've decided, just for fun I suppose, to destroy my life. You're freaking horrible. Griff seems keen to get me to shut up, but Kier's hand settles calmly on his shoulder. He knows he's earned this. I suppose I'm just some random insignificant stranger. What could my thoughts and feelings possibly have to do with anything? Well, if you need a noose around my neck, you have it. But don't think this means I'll ever be able to trust you. There's a moment of quiet. My heart is pounding. And in my head, there's nothing but screaming. I'm so angry I can hardly breathe. Are you done? Like he's talking to a child, not an adult whose existence he irreparably changed for the worse. You're blackmailing me. Don't you freaking dare condescend me, too. Here doesn't answer. Finally. There's a quiet moment. 
Everyone around us seems to be coming to the same conclusion as me. I'm cornered. I don't have a choice in this. I keep my voice as flat and neutral as possible. Not really. No. Then what do I do? All right, we're going to skip ahead. All right. We've been invited to stay in his home. Let us uh, compliment it. You have a nice home? That was nearly a compliment. I suppose I'll take it. That's all I can give right now. At least I can say that I tried. There's a water closet behind that door. If you use the water up, you'll have to get more. I can show you where to get some after I sleep. I'm going to have something to eat before bed. You hungry? I'm glad he can't see the surprise on my face. Are you sure? About letting you have a snack? About keeping me here? Oh, here's the thing, Cryptid. I'm not that worried about you murdering me in my sleep. My door locks the same as yours. And honestly, eternal rest isn't exactly something I'm dreading. He chuckles a little. If you decide to make yourself into a problem, we can find somewhere else to put you. Here. He takes a handful of whatever it is from the bowl and then holds it out to me. This is... Deadly poison. Eat up. A closer look tells me that it's actually an assortment of dried fruits. I don't think this one matters, but take a few. No harm in getting a snack. I take a few and Cure puts the bull away again. He doesn't reveal his mouth as he nibbles. Instead, threading the fruit under his mask. I'm doing the same. Well, get yourself some rest. Don't murder me in my sleep. I'll resist the temptation as best I can. All right, we are alone again. Let me skip ahead. Okay, so we uh, looked around. Maybe he doesn't have friends over much. I continue nibbling. The sickly sweet tart coats. The sickly sweet tart coats the back of my tongue. My search is quick. In the end, it has to be with so little to look at. If I was a decoy for something Kier stole, that means Kier was stealing a person. Could I live with myself helping to steal people? There must be a good reason. I also don't think these thieves are evil, so... It feels desperate, like I'm trying to find the silver lining of a hurricane. But I need, for my own sanity, to believe whatever Kier is doing is for the best. I swallow hard, trying to chase these thoughts away. I'm not going to sleep at all, am I? After some hours of trying to find a comfortable position, I must have fallen asleep because Kier wakes me with sharp knocks to the door. We're going to skip ahead to the meeting in the tavern because I think that's our next big choice. All right, we are unsure of what's going on. Let's interrupt. Okay, stop. What is it? You're talking local business and I'm new to the marketplace. How? Oh, how new? Not quite a month. We're not working with someone that green. A month? By the lunar god Scars, what the hell were you doing outside the mountain to be able to keep up with me? Not your business. Fine. Anyways. Time spent in the marketplace isn't the same as experience in our work. 
love. And if things go wrong, you have no obligation to rescue him. Not reassuring. Not for you, but very much to me. And what is it you don't know, cryptid? The ruby walls, for one. We are continuing the discussion. I will skip it. Oh, I can't skip ahead. The planning continues with Griff drawing up a map on the table with a piece of chalk. For all his belly aching, Kira is helpful to make sure I understand everything. I'd feel patronized if it wasn't so helpful. The rest are begrudgingly patient until we finish the brief. Wow. Yeah, that was actually a little bit nicer. The four of them stand up. I followed their lead. My cloak is just barely fine enough to be worn beyond the ruby walls. But the other four take the chance to fancy themselves up. All right, now we are going to skip to when they're making fun of Griff. Let's join in. You look like a throw pillow screwed a jewelry box. <laughs> oh my god. Love bursts into laughter, mostly at Halo's response, I assume. Rifted. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Kier reaches over, takes hold of my shoulder, and holds tight as he curls into himself, choking on laughter. Laugh it up. After a second, Griff looks at me. It wasn't that funny. You just surprised them with vulgarity. Here pops up a smile in his voice. No, it was a bit funny. You really put it over the top, Halo. Oh no, I... Thanks, Halo. The laughter dies away a little, though the mood has definitely been lifted. Things settle down again. I don't know why I put up with you. Kier pats his shoulder firmly. Neither do I. There's some more scattered laughs, but the atmosphere of the room slowly turns more serious. All right, skipping ahead to when we start the heist. See you there. Unless we have a, a cute moment with Kier in between. Kier seems to set his shoulders and marches forward leaving me to hurry and catch up to him. Beyond the ruby walls, things are still busy, and it's not as though there's anything to muffle the sounds of the rest of the marketplace. But there is still a noticeable change. It really is different. There's nothing in the world like the jewel box. It might have been said in admiration, except Kier's voice is oozing bitter disdain. Kier and I walk side by side, taking a few turns to avoid a direct path to the Pearl Choker. You know the plan. I know the plan. You know where to hide. I know where to hide if you foul everything up. But you won't, will you? From your lips to the moon. Don't make me run again. Or what? Or I'll be very cross. Be still, my beating heart. Anything but that. Wish him well. You'll stay safe, won't you? I have no plans on dying. What about not dreading eternal rest? I'm not afraid of dying. I still don't want to. With my luck, I'd get done in and it'd hurt like, a, like an extremely painful thing. <laughs> then you'll stay safe. Here stops and turns to me. You know, it's a shame that we didn't get to see his fancy outfit, like, for this. He's just wearing his same stuff. 
I feel like Francesco was the only one whose outfit actually changed so far. Here stops and turns to me. More stones in the river of people around us who pay us no mind. <laughs> Here reaches out and then gives me one, two, soft pats on the top of my head. I'll stay safe. You haven't seen the half of what I can do. His voice is warm and confident. At the pearl choker, Here splits away from me to enter through the front door. I slip between the pleasure parlor and the neighboring gambling hall. All right, we will just skip ahead to the end of the heist. Coming down. I can hear love from the balcony above me, but only barely. She's trying to shout and whisper at the same time. Almost silently, all four thieves leap from the balcony two floors up and land on the gambling hall's addition. From there, they climb down. Well, you didn't betray us. How could I? You've got my stuff. Ah, smart to put those facts together. Very good. Glad to see you were able to shut up long enough to not get caught. Well, let's get out of here. When we reunite, it's in the rundown pub in Mouse Hole. Well, that was painless. That went much better than it had any right to. Good job, cryptid. Here pats my shoulder once. Drinks on us. All right. To a successful run. The others raise their tankards. What happens if we toast with water? Want to keep my head clear if I can. I raise my water glass. The glass clinks and we all drink. Well, show us the loot. The drinking goes on for hours. I hear a lot of songs and more than a few stories about other gigs they've done. Halo eventually brings out a deck of cards. Being the sober one playing, I get to wipe the floor with everyone else. Then La Vions, and she and Halo go home to rest. Griff follows the server, who I now know is called Delight, into the back. Let's head home, cryptid. I feel exhaustion seeping into my bones. Let's. Kier stumbles into me as I walk. I can't find it in me to be bothered when he bumps into me for the third time. I'm tired. Not from the job, either. The marketplace is an exhausting place to be. The words fall out of me before I can stop them. <laughs> I didn't expect us to say that. You're a real bag of dicks. You know that? Tell me something I don't know. Just a, just a terrible piece of work. <laughs> An absolute wreck of a person. I wouldn't trust you as far as I could throw you. I wouldn't trust me and I can throw myself pretty far. He rethinks his choice to show me how far he can throw himself just in time. Anyways, why am I a bag of dicks this time? Not everyone wants to be doing crime. You're lucky I'm okay with doing it. You think I don't feel bad about the whole thing? If I could snap my fingers and tomorrow no one would get murdered if the beautiful people found Mouse Hole, I'd do that instead of making you work for us. But I don't have magic snappy fingers. Not even sure Mouse Hole is the first thing I'd save with magic snappy fingers. No? There are people getting sold in every auction, and that's just 
the legit stuff. The marketplace is hell cryptid. And a lot of people never know it. Then why are you stealing people? Griff said that... That you steal people sometimes. You time it right. You can steal a person who's been bought. And let them free. Their family gets the money and they don't get tortured to death. I knew there was a good reason. Here stop. Here stops and stares at me. You honestly think we've got it in us to buy and sell people like they're shit? When we're all just the shit off the streets already? Bag of dicks, human trash pile, hideously awful but compellingly handsome. That's all fine. I can live with that. Well, I mean, no one called you compellingly handsome, but I'm pretty sure you are. But sacrificing a life for my own happiness? Fucking never. I will be censoring that. Good. Yeah. Good. And what about you? I'm not... I'm not keen on being a bag of dicks, but it's better than being a monster. No, not that. The magic snappy fingers. What would you save? Myself? I don't know. I guess myself. Makes sense. The lunar eye core is for you, right? Yeah. Why? What's it for? Oh, why not? It's... It's called fractum anima. It's an extremely rare illness. Deadly. Eventually, it's not a quick killer, and it does a lot of other nasty stuff. Not really a fun post-job chat topic, though. I'm sorry. It's not your fault I'm sick, right? No, still. Sorry all the same. Thanks. It feels good for someone down here to know about it. What I'm going through. Alright, I'm going to see what the other choices give us, but I am going to go with that one specifically. The downtrodden? I don't know, maybe I'd be like you and save the downtrodden. I can't complain about an answer like that after I picked it. But you are being a copycat. I can think of worse things, Mr. Bag of D. I will be censoring that word at least some of the time. And you wouldn't save yourself. What? You want Lunar Icor. It's for you, right? Okay, so we tell him anyways. Let's get the other one. Mouse hole? Well, if you're gonna be all noble, I might as well be the hero of Mouse Hole. You're gonna steal my whole home from me if you do that. My home now. And you wouldn't save yourself. The house with blue shutters is right before us. He puts a hand to the wall of the house and murmurs something softly into the walls. Then Kier unlocks the door and lets me in. Welcome home, cryptid. He's still standing in the doorway. It's an arresting image, this man who is ruthless and generous in equal measure, welcoming me into his home as a kindness and, bl and blocking the door because I am a prisoner. Then he reaches for my face. I refuse to flinch away. And instead of touching my mask as I feared, he drops his hand on my head. Is this... <laughs> That's so cute. See, look at how huge he is. Is this going to be a habit of yours? He pats the top of my head. Once. Twice. Might be. Yeah. I'm not a child. You're not. 
He doesn't stop. You're sure fun, though. Thanks? His hand stills on the top of my head. A light pressure that's comforting in its own way. Cryptid? Yes. There's a long moment of silence. Thanks. For not murdering you in your sleep. Happy to continue not doing that. No, you... No, you but You know what I mean. He's still quiet. Are you going to elaborate then? I'm not a mind reader. Fine. For being here, for doing the work, for embracing this life. You didn't have to. That job is going to pay extremely well when we deliver. We'll be able to do so much for Mousehole with the money. And we couldn't have taken the job without you. There's no one else I could trust with the job. Thanks for not betraying it. I feel a slow blossoming warmth behind my ribs. Despite the mask, I feel like I can see Kier properly for the first time. The naked sincerity has me a bit off balance. Well, I do need something only you can give. No, no, that sounds awful. And I want to believe that helping you, helping Mousehole is, is the right thing. If I can get what I need by helping people who need it, that's worth a lot, isn't it? The warmth spreads down to my fingertips. They seem to tingle and I flex my hands to soothe the sensation. Yeah. He takes his hand away. All right, enough of that sappy stuff. I'm tired. He closes the door behind him and heads for his room, scooping up a snack. I'm left alone in the room. I'm exhausted, but I do feel a weight coming off my shoulders. For now, it's home. Best end. Welcome home. So far, out of all the best ends we've gotten, this has been the best one because we're not worrying about uh whatever the heck Olander is doing because he's kind of a bad person <laughs> i love him but he he straight up murdered a dude um francesco wants to get into some illicit stuff and we have to worry about losing francesco regardless and this one is just yeah, we're a thief and it kind of sucks and we've been blackmailed into it, but we're helping people. We're helping ourselves. That's a pretty good end. I I do look forward to seeing what um, Cirrus's end will be like as well. Um, I liked that one. It was not as, it was not quite as emotionally jarring as Oleander and Francesco's could be, but it was a fun route. 
for as awful as Kier kind of was, he was also a really fun character with some some good reasons behind why he does bad things. So, you know, I like him. He's kind of a Robin Hood type. And if you made it this far, I want to thank you all for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed Kier's route. I will try to get to Cirrus's route very, very soon. I am trying to get ahead on YouTube, so hopefully I can do that. But uh, if you liked it, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more of me, but you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe. I upload videos every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday, as well as extras and shorts randomly throughout the week. I also stream on Twitch and now on YouTube. So if you want to know when I go live, just follow me on social media and on Twitch. And I hope to see you all next time. Bye.